way back home and right now with my grandfather's truck and uh, excited to get started on this. If you saw the previous video, I already kind of told you about that and I was going to go through some things. In this video, over what the truck actually needs, and kind of show you around it. And uh, It's gotten a lot rougher uh, since I bought it for him about four years ago. So uh, it, needs a, it needs a lot more work than it did. It was just a couple real, real small like specks of rust and stuff um, in like two different spots, like on the bed. And now it's it's got quite <laughs> quite a bit on it, so. Uh, but we'll take care of it. I'm on the road right now, though, in the nasty red. And aside from this uh, right lane being all patched and rough, the truck itself is amazing. I mean, I've got that thing strapped down, and uh, the truck's not moving at all in the trailer. Cruising with about 680 degrees on the exhaust temp, about five pounds of boost, 100. And 60 degrees on the trans temp and uh, just sailing. Got the cruise set going 60 miles an hour, about 1800 RPM. Just smooth sailing. That's all I'm going to do. Just keep it about 60. Just ride it out the whole way. I got about another hour and 45 minutes. I've already got about just about an hour down. So, uh, so far, so good. This truck, this is okay. Here's the thing, guys. When we built this truck way back when I put the compounds, injectors, and valve springs, and valve lash, and I mean, everything that we did to it, this is what we built it to do that we just never really used for any long trips. I mean, my dad, look at all the patches on this side. I'm going to get over in the other lane. This is horrible. But my dad's used it a few times, like pull a tractor, you know, about two miles from one farm to the other, but he hasn't really been using it for any kind of long distance hauling, which is what I've been doing with it. Actually, the last like two weeks, I've done several trips that were over an hour, and this one's about a three hour haul. And the truck just, it does it so well. I'm really excited to actually get to use the truck for what we built it for, you know, towing transmission and compounds and all that jazz. It's finally getting used for its intended purpose, and it, it does it so well. I'm super happy with how this thing performs. Okay, everybody, so we got the truck here. It is back to our place, and uh, we're gonna go over a few things that we're gonna be doing to the truck here. A couple of things that we're not gonna change, um, and at least that's not on the agenda at the moment. And keep in mind, there are some things about this truck that are different from when I originally bought it from my grandfather. So some of those things we might go back to, but just in a better fashion than they were. And a couple of things have just wore out a little bit more and uh, just are gonna need some cosmetic assistance. Mechanically though, the truck is totally sound. Uh, the truck drives great. I was driving around the last couple of days and they said they've never had any problems with it starting, running, driving, shifting gears. It's always done all that stuff totally fine. And I don't know for sure, but I'm gonna take a wild guess that the transmission was probably rebuilt at some point not too long ago before I bought it from my grandfather because it's got 246,000 miles on it now and it still runs and shifts and everything perfect. Like it doesn't shift like hard or sloppy or I mean it shifts spot on. So um, transmission's in really good shape. Engine runs totally healthy. Um, we're obviously going to be doing all kinds of service stuff like make sure the coolant's good, do an oil change, flush some fluids, probably do the front and rear differential, all that kind of stuff just to make sure all the fluids are good. This is a truck that we're, we're going to regularly drive it, Reagan and I, but it's not going to be like our go-to truck for like all occasions. I mean, we have other stuff to drive, so we don't need to drive this truck all the time. It is going to get used, it is going to get driven, but in a very careful manner. So in terms of things we're going to be changing and replacing, I guess you could say, about the truck. A, the bumper is rusting out, typical Dodge bumper. Uh, so that's going to be getting changed out with a new one. This we're not going to be taking off. I bought these mud flaps for him as a gift uh, about a week after I bought him the truck and the wheels and tires for it. Um, so we're going to keep those on. I remember us looking for self-tappers in his uh, barn and screwing those on there. So we're going to leave those just because I kind of like the memory of it. And um, you can still get behind here and clean and whatever if you really want to. But I do want to keep those. The exhaust is a single exhaust right now. It did have duels on it. However, 
at one point they did take it to the shop to get new manifold gaskets put on because the manifold had an exhaust leak and it was making like a tick 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 you know what i mean like that kind of a you know an exhaust leak sound on one of these trucks that's very common on these if they've never been replaced and it just got annoying and so they took it in to get an exhaust uh, new exhaust manifold gaskets and the exhaust itself was cracked in a couple spots and had some holes in it from rust so the shop actually put a new exhaust on there as well when they did that work so it no longer has the dual exhaust setup on it but i think i'd like to go back to the dual exhaust setup kind of like what it had on it before but with a spin my father-in-law has one of these trucks too with a I think it's a 5.2 liter, so 318. And he's got it coming out kind of at an angle right here, but it's tucked up like right below this um, leaf pack hanger right there, or whatever you call it. And it comes right here, just, just hardly, you can see it under the bedside. And he's got four inch exhaust tips on there that are black. I'd like to do something similar to that on this, especially since we do have the mud flaps. For the most part, they should stay fairly clean if they're tucked up right here just hardly poking out and i think it sounded really good and i remember him loving the sound of this thing when we got it, it had a you know dual exhaust on it but there was a couple of real small pinholes so it just um ended up getting replaced when they did the manifold gaskets but i would like to go back to that in terms of the lighting on it i think i'm gonna stick with oem style lighting um they did put new tail lights on this truck because one of them got backed into and busted out so they did already put new taillights on there. They're factory style. The headlights are in really good shape. So we're gonna keep those. I remember putting LEDs in there a long time ago. Now we're gonna come to the paint and body stuff. So for the most part, the bed's in good shape other than this spot in the exact same spot on the other side. I'm probably gonna keep the inner liners. I kind of like them. And it does probably help with keeping salt from getting thrown all the way up into the bed rails and all kinds of stuff if you keep it on a setup kind of like this i think it, it would actually help with that a little bit but if you look underneath i mean other than some small scaly stuff i mean annoying but you know it's nothing terrible you can see how the fender liner actually has protected this section of frame the absolute best and some people might argue that but um well no fender liner fender liner <laughs> that section of the frame is super clean and i know people are probably going to argue well that's probably why this rusted out might be the case i don't know but i'd rather the frame not rust out as bad um i'd be more concerned about that than the body if it does ever get driven in the salt again or is not thoroughly washed cab mounts of this truck are in really good shape i remember that when we looked at it i was like this thing is really clean for the most part the entire frame is pretty darn clean this is probably the worst of it it's like a little bit scaly like right here but that can be ground down pretty darn easy it's just small surface rust starting to peel away at the original frame coating but um that's an easy fix the rest of it is very very clean inside and out you know inner part of the frame outer part of the frame it's in pretty darn good shape all the cab mounts are in pretty darn good shape they're all salvageable there's a little bit of surface rust on that front passenger side one there but that can be again ground down a little bit and saved for the most part See, it's just, it's starting, but it should be okay. Everything else is in pretty good shape on this side of the truck. The rockers have some surface rust starting, so those are probably gonna have to get uh, replaced if it's pretty bad on the inside, but it does look like there's like two spots. There's one here and spot right here where it looks like it's about to come through the rocker. So those will probably get replaced. Cab corner, starting to bubble out here. So that's probably gonna get replaced. The front fender though, I'm not sure what we're gonna do on that or not. I'm gonna take a wild guess that so we're probably gonna end up replacing this. It does just have a couple real small like specks starting. They're not like, they're not like holes that are about to pop through, but it does also have a small dent here, which I don't know if that can be pulled or not because of the location of it, but probably gonna be a safe bet that that's gonna need replaced as well. Hood is kind of faded top of the truck's kind of faded as well and then you come to the driver's side and that's where most of the the rust and rot is so front fender for the most part looks clean until you get down to the lower portion here and from here down pretty much it's it's pretty much about to fall through it's pretty bad um i mean you can still tap on it and there's no hole but it's it's only a matter of time that's pretty much gone rocker panel on this side is of course pretty much gone and 
going to need to be replaced, obviously. Uh, the door is pretty much shot too, so that's gonna have to go. Let's see, it's starting to rust on the underside, so the door structurally is pretty much gonna go, and the rockers haven't gotten up into the cab yet, but um, they need to be replaced. The back driver's side door, though, is fine. It's just got a little bit of surface rust starting, but that can be ground down pretty easy and saved. Cab corner gone and then of course like i said in that same spot of bed rust on this side um and that pretty much sums up the body work that it's needing and i know there's going to be some people that are like what's the point of saving the entire truck if it needs pretty much both front fenders one door rockers on both sides bed needs fixed it's sentimental i mean it's that's the only reason for buying this truck at all or trading a vehicle to my grandmother to get this truck was for sentimental value because I remember the day when I bought this truck for him, it was emotional and he loved it and he was so happy for it and he was excited about it and I want to keep it. And so that's the whole point of this and that's really the only reason why I bought it at all. There'd probably be no other reason I would have bought, you know, an old 1500 Dodge. I would have had no use for it, but with the history behind this truck, it'll be very nice to have it. And since of course we will be having the tractor here soon as well and going through that, we are going to potentially, this is what I'd like to do. You guys let me know what you think. I'd like to set this truck up to be able to haul this trailer with my grandpa's tractor on it. Now, am I going to use it for that all the time? No, most likely not. I'm not gonna use this as like a towing truck to just pull stuff everywhere. It's not really made to heavy haul, but I would like to put some airbags on the rear of this, replace all the shocks and stuff. And that way, if I do take his, you know, he loved to go to like the fair and look at the old tractors and stuff, or he'd like to go to tractor shows and stuff, look at old antique tractors. He loved doing that stuff. So I think I'd like to, once I get his truck restored, have this thing set up with a brake controller and all that, so that we can actually safely, with airbags included, like I just said, pull his Alice Chalmers tractor on this trailer behind his truck. And then once that's all restored as well, and the truck is, you know, if we take it to like tractor shows or whatever, I'd like to be able to use his truck to pull his tractor. And I think it would just be kind of neat to be able to do it that way. Um, that way, you know, when you guys come out to see it and stuff, when the truck and tractor are done and we'd take them to small fairs and stuff, probably more than likely gonna be the Belleville World's Fair, as they call it, when everything's done. I think it'd be really cool. And I think you guys would like to see it together as a combination all redone. And I think it's gonna turn out really well. Now, in terms of wheels and tires, these wheels were unfortunately neglected. I don't think they were ever cleaned or washed since they were brand new just about four years ago now. So I'm guessing we're gonna end up replacing the wheels. There's, I mean, they could be saved, uh, but they're they're starting to pit pretty bad and the coating is starting to come off of them. There's some mayhem wheels I got him. I just wanted to get him something that was a little bit flashier because he liked chrome and you know, I just got him a mild um, tire that I thought would be, you know, suitable for if he's off-road at his farm, you know, going up and down hills and through the woods or whatever he used his truck for, he had a little bit more traction than like your generic street tire or highway tire. I'm probably gonna be replacing the wheels and the tires on this thing, but I'm not gonna go with anything too crazy. I wanna be able to fully use the truck and I want it to stay for the most part stock ride height and not change too much about it suspension wise. So I'm thinking about going with a similar size tire, but maybe on like a 16 by nine or a 16 by 10. Uh, you guys let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I feel like that's a style of wheel that he would go with if he was gonna choose a new set of wheels on his truck, which he never really did that. He just kind of ran it with whatever wheels were on it when he bought it. But you know, he did have things that he liked if he were to spend the money on them, which he never really did. But if he really was going to, I have an idea of what I think he would have put on it. And I think that's what I'm gonna go with, uh, which is like, a, again, like a 16 or 17, nine or 10 inch wide wheel on stock suspension with like a 31 to 33 inch tall tire and i think it'll look pretty darn good pulling the alice chalmers behind it so i think that's what we're going to go with for wheels and tires and the fronts are kind of choppy i don't think alignment was ever done and i don't believe the tires were ever rotated so the front tires are pretty much shot on both sides they're all wore out unevenly and 
they're just a mess so when you like come to a slow down like when you're coming to a stop sign the thing just kind of like shimmies back and forth because at low speeds it kind of rocks the truck around in the front end because the tires are so uneven so uh they're pretty much they're pretty much shot i mean maybe they could be swapped to the back and it wouldn't be so bad and you could get a little more miles out of them but um when the truck's all done from painting stuff i'm probably not going to want to keep these on it just because the wheels themselves are pretty wore out already and starting to peel all the crumbs starting to peel off but you know that's the agenda for this truck and for the most part that's all we're going to do with it interior wise my grandmother actually stitched up the seat on the inside so the interior is actually in pretty good shape it's not really ripped up nothing's bad other than a couple little cracks in the bezel around the dash and it's missing like one of the dials for like the lights or something but other than that the interior is in pretty darn good shape it's not all ripped up headliners in good shape we're not going to do anything absurd like crazy with this thing but it's going to be nice it's going to be subtle but it's going to be just aggressive enough to turn heads when it's all done but keep it about the way i think he would have liked it and in terms of engine performance on this thing i don't really know if there's anything to do on these trucks or not i don't know anything about them i wasn't planning on doing anything to it other than like like i said putting airbags in the rear end to make it handle a load a little bit better because i think these engines are pretty darn reliable it's the 59360 and i just don't i don't know if there's really much i want to change about it just because i know it runs so stinking good with 200 some thousand miles on it already and it doesn't sound like it needs anything i mean you can find out when you change the oil you'll start to see i mean some stuff showing up in it if it's wearing down and looking pretty bad but for the most part it seems to run great and i think i'm going to keep it that way and of course i can't forget to remind you guys that if you want to enter to win this truck plus five thousand dollars cash it's this simple just go to our website lmpgear.com you can buy a hat like this a shirt like this or one of the other many 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 products we have in the store and as soon as you check out you're automatically entered to win this truck plus five thousand dollars cash if you want bonus entries Every $1 gets you 20 entries when you sign up for our monthly subscription boxes. Yes, the mystery monthly mystery boxes get you 20 times entries for every $1 you spend. And that gets you 20x entries automatically every single month into our current giveaway. So take advantage of those. But if you don't want that, it's okay. You still get entered no matter what you buy. But if you want 20x entries, monthly mystery boxes always get 20x towards winning our current giveaways in cash. So thank you guys so much for all the love and support. Hopefully you guys are excited about the Ram 1500 project. I know I am super ready to see that truck redone and looking amazing. So thanks so much guys for all the love and support. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.